Listen, working three Fridays in a row is really tough, but it's a little easier when you have the best trash talker in the business here. C.J. Gardner-Johnson reacts to his Lions schedule release. All pro Patrick Sertan stops by to tell us which games he's got circled. And, yeah, look out quarterbacks all over the National Football League and to tell us how, why, what, who, when, and huh from the NFL Charlotte Carey, the senior broadcasting manager and schedule wizard, tells us how it was all made. Plus, schedule quirks with me. Happy Friday. All right, we're here. Schedule has been released. Uh, we like to have a reason to have bubbles around here sometimes. So, And I'm not going to mess this up. Do you want to do this, Marissa? I think you should do this. You do this. So we'd like to make a little toast to all of the social media teams, including, what is it, the Red Stallions? Is that what the Falcons are called? All these crazy names. Listen, all the teams crushed it, and we're happy. The bubbly fans on Broadway in Tennessee. There you go. Yeah. There are some, you know, the anime Easter eggs from the Chargers. They crush it, and they're big time, prime time this year. Uh, yeah, the Bear with Chicago, I appreciate you. All very well done. So here's a toast to these NFL social media teams working their asses off to get all this amazing content out and make it such a fun celebration for all of us. And we've got a new lion on the show. They're opening up the season against the defending Super Bowl champion Chiefs. C.J. Gardner-Johnson picked that squad. Why? He'll tell us he's on the show today. All pro Patrick Sertan will pop by as well because we have a schedule, people. That is a roadmap. It's a symbol of hope. It is optimism. It is LFG vibes up the wazoo. They are high as hell. And I promise we're here to break it all down. So let's start with a look at the teams that are toasting to the primetime life, the bright lights of it all, the high stakes. This is truly the currency of respect from the NFL gods and schedule makers. The Chiefs, Bills, Cowboys, and hello Chargers, who are in a four-way tie for the most with six. Never thought I would see the Chargers in a group at the top, but I love it for them. Bolt up, baby, and get ready. Now the Jets, the Packers. Okay, Jordan Love. What are we seeing in Jordan Love? Charlotte Carey, she'll be on in a second. Vikings, Raiders, Eagles, Niners, they each have five. A moment for the Bengals, who only got four? Four primetime games? <laughs> what? Crickets here. I mean, I mean, they're only one of the most successful and, and watchable teams over the last two seasons. Why would we give them four? Why would we give Jordan Love more? Does it make any sense? That's okay. That's my little gripe. And if you have them, hit us up at Up and Adam Show on Twitter. And the other thing that jumps out is a gripe for the four teams without a single primetime game this year. We're sending new love. But I like the undersell over deliver of it all. And we do have a poll over at Up and Adam Show. Which team do you think will make the schedulers? Regret not having a primetime game the most. Will it be the Texans, the Falcons, the Cardinals, or the Colts? Now, we also uh, got word on so many incredible matchups, so let's get through it here uh, because these are the games, and we'll just pop them up. These are the games everyone is going to be talking about this morning. Okay, the first ever meeting between Rodgers and Mahomes. That's week four on Sunday Night Football. Mahomes was hurt and missed what was supposed to be their first meeting in 2019. Aaron had COVID. He missed the 2021 matchup. Third time's a high-scoring legendary game, hopefully. Bills-Bengals divisional round rematch. That's slated for week nine on Sunday night. Sure to be emotional on both sides and maybe a preview for what's to come in the AFC. Eagles-Chiefs Super Bowl grudge match rematch. That's week 11 on MNF. Uh, Niners, they get their shot at revenge, guys, in Philly week 13. So we'll see uh, who's under center that day. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Hopefully not Christian McCaffrey. I'll say that. And then we got round. We get round five of the best rivalry in the game right now. Bengals at Chiefs. That is week 17, potentially with the number one seeding and the entire AFC on the line there. So those are the games everyone is excited and talking about. But here are some games that I love and that I think you should focus on. Are highlighters still a thing? Are we highlighting things? I don't know. Put it in your Google calendar. These are the games. And I want to start with two of the biggest surprises from yesterday, the primetime love from the league for the Chargers and the Bears. We get a combined 10 primetime games, six for LA, four for Chicago. But the most intriguing one is week eight when they are playing each other on Sunday night football. The schedule makers are showing faith in these teams, okay? But also in the quarterbacks. Listen, you can debate the eliteness. You can debate the social media-ness of these two guys if you want. But you cannot deny that they are the most 
two of the most exciting quarterbacks to watch in this entire league, and I think they're going to light things up in primetime. This is a highlight factory waiting to happen. This is shot for shot. When they make those lists at the end of the year of, like, the 10 best plays, I wouldn't be surprised if multiple plays come from this very game with Justin Fields and Justin Herbert. They've also never faced each other. This is all about aesthetic. This is all about just what it's going to look like out on the field, but it also means a lot that it's in week eight because it shows faith from the league in these two teams, and that's important. It shows that the Chargers are going to be relevant. They have high expectations in the West. But the team that was at the bottom of the barrel, the lowly woly Bears at the bottom, we think they're going to be relevant going into November. And that is something that should be pinging your radar, and that should be definitely uh, a wow factor. So I'm in. So next, let's focus on, you know, everybody's talking about the Bengals and the Chiefs, and everybody's talking about the Bengals and the Bills, and all of that, and these high-profile rivalry games that since he has... The one that's flying under the radar this morning, guys, is week two, bright and early. What does that division look like? They've got the Baltimore Ravens, and they're hosting. And this game is going to set the tone for pretty much everything, okay, and the entire AFC North. And it's likely going to feature Lamar for once. Don't forget, he missed three of the last four games in this series, and they've pretty much all come down to the wire, even without him. So, Bengals fans, while I love you, and while I'm sure the chip is on your shoulder right now for these four primetime games and the Packers have five, blah, 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 don't just start tantalizing and focusing on those fancy rematches just yet, right? None of that matters if you can't take uh, care of business in your own division when you've got Lamar, now you've got Odell, Lamar being healthy. And, you know, after the fumble in the jungle, you know Ravens fans are fired up to get this thing going. That will be an exciting game because... Who do you like in that division? It'll be sort of settled and on pace there to start this season in week two. Okay, and then the last, let me see. Oh, the last sneaky matchup I'm looking at is week seven. It's Sunday night football. The Dolphins are headed to Philly to take on the Eagles. Why is this one sticking out to me so much? It's just the first time that these two former Bama buddies, teammates, BFFs, Tua Tagovailoa and Jalen Hurts will face each other. So here's how I feel about it. You cannot write the story of either one of these quarterbacks without the other. They are forever linked. Tua taken over for Jalen to win Bama the national championship game. The next year, Jalen taken over for an injured Tua to win the Crimson Tide, the SEC title. They've battled for starting jobs, but they've never squared off against each other as opponents. So I'm very excited to see how that one shakes out. And speaking of, of those two teams, they sit at number one and number two if you look at the teams with the alleged I don't know who comes up with this, what permutation or algorithm breaks this out, uh, but this is the toughest schedule, guys, of uh, the 2023 so far, and three of the four toughest belong to NFC East teams. If you look at the easiest strength of schedule, I'd like you to find an NFL player that tells me anything that they do is easy, uh, or they have an easy game, you look at it and, you know, the, the ease belongs to the NFC South, the Falcons, the Saints topping that list, the AFC South, the Texans, Colts, Titans rounding it out. Now we've got lots of guests on the show. Charlotte Carey from the National Football League. Everything we just talked about, she had a hand in. She put together, so she'll join us. Patrick Sertan, an all-pro, and CJ Gardner-Johnson is on the show. Big one on Friday. Johnson on the show, Patrick Sertan on the program. But there you go. That was the uh, L.A. Raiders schedule there at Buffalo. Here's what we decided to do. My producers put together everything you should do. I can't really make, make this out. Uh, let's see. I, we got a tailgate on October 1st in the South Lock. Kickoff is at 1 Eastern. You got some ideas there for what you guys should be doing. I can't make it out, but check it out. We'll put those on social as well. Uh, we're going to have Patrick Sertan. We're going to have CJ Gardner John. So we've got Carrie, uh, Charlotte Carey on the program as well. But every season, there's a lot of twists, there's a lot of things in the schedule. So we're doing a bit of a segment and we're digging into some of the unique features of this year's schedule and something we are calling Quirks. Ahoy. These are maybe the things that you miss when you're breezing it over, looking at your team, sort of settling your tickets and where you want to go. And let's start with the Giants. I don't know that I call this a quirk or like a womp, womp, womp. But listen, we have the Giants playing a stretch early on with seven out of ten games on the road, including two West Coast <laughs> games in a row. This is brutal. They're the first team to have to do that since 1990. Uh, Giants fans, I'm just going to say this, and we can talk to Charlotte Carey about, you can send your hate mail to Aaron Rodgers, okay, because that's why you're on the road. The schedule makers, 
I assume, wanted to make sure the Jets got those games against the Chiefs, the Eagles, the Bills, the Pats in there early with his greatness. Aaron Rodgers, very interesting, very tough road for the Giants. And of course, uh, a fun storyline there is Brian Dable going up and taking on the Buffalo Bills. So that'll be a good one. But Giants, oof, a tough draw for them. So I'm understanding the fans not loving that. Let us know at Up and Adam Show. We also get um, what I, what could be, I'm just going to call my shot here, the Will Levis Scorched Earth Tour. Like, move over Taylor Swift, hottest ticket in town. Let me explain. Starting in week 12, okay? That's around the point of the season. you got to think Levis is taken over for Tannehill. If Tannehill doesn't go, is it doesn't go right. He's expected to start the season. I get that. But uh, if Levis gets the start, he will face pretty much every single quarterback that drafted him over the span of four weeks. This is who he's got. He gets Bryce Young in the Panthers week 12, Anthony Richardson in the Colts week 13, and then C.J. Stroud twice in weeks 15 17, and 17. So Levis really has a chance which is a rare thing in the NFL to immediately his rookie year make every team that made him wait in that waiting room, make every team that passes on him, passed on him pay, right? I can't remember a quarterback getting a stretch like this, and so I am very much here for it. So the next thing, I talked about Tua versus Hurts later, earlier. They're uh, going to face each other for the first time ever. Tua is going to face all of the other Alabama quarterbacks back to back to back, starting with Brees Young in week six, Jalen in week seven, his former backup Mac Jones in week eight. And he's got, you know, Nick Saban must be loving that and making plans to go to all of these games. So we love that. That's a little quirk. Um, what's another one that I really like? Uh, I'm always here for the drama. Okay. And we get a few, I don't know what you call these, beefs still? Is that what people are calling them? These are spicy matchups on the slate this year. Week one, you get Juju Smith-Schuster as a Patriot. Marissa loves this one as an Eagles fan because he takes on James Bradbury, Darius Slay, and the Eagles secondary. What was the beef there? Yeah, well, it was the, the critical holding penalty, right, from Bradbury on Juju. It led to, you know, Kansas City has that game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl, and then this, you know, the Valentine thing that happened, a little after, that was dramatic, okay? And then, like, there was a fallout with the entire Eagles defense coming after Juju. So get your popcorn ready for that one. We also get Bobby Wagner, who, I don't who does this in the NFL? He, you know, takes on the Rams, who he played for last year before returning to Seattle in the offseason. We love that. We have C.J. Gardner-Johnson up against Michael Thomas in Week 13. We're excited to talk to him about that. That's their first matchup as opponents. Remember, Michael Thomas was suspended for punching C.J. during practice, so we'll have Gardner-Johnson maybe to – we'll probably, probably – I'm probably not going to bring that up. And then Week 17, Bengals at Chiefs. Um, or is it like the jabronis traveling to Burrowhead? Is that the way we're, we're doing that? Are we bringing this back? That one, as we all know, is going to be a heated. Uh, next up, let's see what's another good one. Let me look. I need to figure this out. Okay, so it's dolphins. Um, Here's the thing about the, the Dolphins. The, there's, you know, it's a game of inches, right? So everything matters. And the weather, everybody makes a big deal out of it, especially in September when that will look, out, uh, look like. So they, they wore out teams, if you remember, in September. They took down the Patriots. They took down the Bills in the first three weeks of the season. The Bills could barely get themselves off the field after that game. So they didn't get so lucky this year, which I hate to see, because I think it's a fun little little bit of strategery, if you will. Um, they have to go on the road through their first four. Why would you get that? Including divisional matchups against the Patriots and the Bills. So the positive on the flip side is that they do get to avoid some real cold games in Foxborough, Buffalo, and the Meadowlands late in the season. So I guess that's good. But that was a little quirk that I was looking forward to seeing how that would shape up for this year since it was so impactful uh, and the AFC is such a tight little race in that conference. And finally, just because I'm a sick pup and I look at this kind of stuff, and it's one of the first things I looked at, it's which week is going to suck for my fantasy lineup. Like, this is the football death trap uh, of the season, and it is week 13, okay? Look at who's not available. Sorry to be, this is like a neg negative spin on everything, but like, the star power that is unavailable to you, you must plan ahead. Multiple top five players at every single uh, position. Um, so prepare yourself accordingly, and do not say that I did not warn you to pick up an extra tight end because you can't play Andrews Waller, and you can't play Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, or Justin Fields. But to get a beat on that first sort of negative, and we have Charlotte Carey coming on, and, and this is a hard thing to do, and it's part 
math and it's part algorithm and it's part, you know, making it fair for everybody. And the way that they've always described it, Mark, Mike North and Charlotte Carey to me when I was on Good Morning Football, and I don't know if they were on this morning, but it's not everybody, the way to have it is that not everybody's really, no one's really like excited and no one's really upset. Because you can't make it if, you, if one person's super happy, that means somebody else is really not excited about that. Whoever your opponent is for that week or whoever in the division didn't get that sort of love. So uh, it's a hard dance to dance. And then you have to really imagine that they bring in Amazon. And then they say, guess what, Amazon? Multiple teams can play Thursday nights. And then they bring in extra holiday games. And they decide to do an Amazon Friday game. And then guess what? International games are expanding at a crazy clip. So how do we adjust for that when you know from previous years, teams did not want to go to London unless they were playing on the eastern side of the country before making those trips to make it better for their team. So there's a lot of uh, happiness. There's a lot of like disgruntlement that goes on. But I think it's when you get that perfect, like, Whatever, we hate this, but at least we got this that makes it sort of worthwhile. I think we're waiting and juggling on some guests, but to bring us back to that Giants point, because I would probably say the Giants may be a little bit more disgruntled than other fan bases. They go through this thing last year where they're rebuilding, and then it becomes uh, their, the fact that they're contending, and they, you know, we all bit off more than we can chew with them. They get this beautiful deal done with Daniel Jones. Now we have Saquon Barkley is really the only deal that we all have our eyes on, like, when is this going to get done? Because they're contenders. They've got Dable. They've got their guys. Uh, and they've added, and they, of course, have Waller, and they have all of this. To see this sled of seven out of 10 games on the road. And, and to link that to Aaron Rodgers, who's getting all the love after the Giants surpassed every single person's expectation last year, cannot be sitting well with the callers, Matthew Hamilton, from where you are on the other side of the country, uh, up there, you know, that, that Metro North talk this morning must not be nice <laughs> if you are a G-Men fan. <laughs> Oh yeah, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of angry Giants fans this morning, and it's not just that that it's seven out of ten on the road. It's some of the opponents that they're playing in there too. They're going to San Francisco, to Miami, to Buffalo, to Dallas. It's a it's a brutal slate and a brutal stretch of games. Yeah, I mean, what do you think? Uh, I mean, should, when I say direct your hate mail at Aaron Rodgers, do you link that to that a little bit, or is it just cute? I feel like it has to be a little bit because they gave the Jets three home games in their first in the first four weeks. I think they wanted to get Rodgers at MetLife against some premium opponents. They have the uh, they have the Bills, they have the Patriots, they have the Chiefs in those first four games at MetLife. So you have to think, you know, obviously the Giants can't play at MetLife. They they did do a creative job of scheduling sometimes, like they would give the Giants a Monday, uh, the Jets a Monday night game, and yeah. the Giants have a Sunday game in MetLife. But there's only so much of that you can do. I think the Rodgers thing definitely did play a factor here. Oof, and I think know. that makes Giants fans even angry. <laughs> yeah, let us, I, literally, literally. Let us know how you guys feel. I can't believe the Bears have four primetime games. I'm excited about that. The Jags, by the way, we were right about our predictions. We said the Jets would have five, and then they have really have six if you count the Black Friday game with Amazon. So Aaron Rodgers and company getting a lot of love uh, all over the map. And then you had, what did I say, the Jags would have two primetime games. They have three. So people are believing in Trevor Lawrence. We get Trevor Lawrence versus Joe Burrow and primetime you love to see that and then a division uh, situation otherwise it'll just be uh, a, a lot of fun and I think Jacksonville's really excited about that um, Chargers fans amazing amazing that they're like leading the pack because Justin Herbert is so incredible and fun to watch so fun matters highlights matters schedule matters Taylor Swift's tour matters like at all there's so <laughs> much that goes into this do you have anything that you want me to ask Charlotte Carey um, I'm curious to find out. I think to me, one of the toughest decisions would be putting that Chiefs Dolphins game in Germany because you wanted the to see Tyreek. Tyreek talk so much. He even had he changed his Twitter bio to like the number one instigator of 2023. He, I think he was really gearing up yeah. to uh, to make that a moment. And the decision to put that in Germany, I mean, it, it, beyond just that aspect of it, it's also going to be one of the most exciting games of the year. As he said earlier this week, I think that's going to be a super high scoring game. And to put that in Germany, I think that's a little bit of a statement. I'd love to hear what went into that. Now, did the Seahawks drop a video finally? Because we were waiting for the Seahawks. Did they drop one finally? And it was the babies? Did. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, the Seattle know, star, yeah. Alex, Alex from the Saints this morning was tweeted a shout-out to somebody with Seattle. 
the guy who runs social for Seattle, who I've never met, so I, I apologize. I think his name's Ken. And that he started it because they, back in 2016, made a cupcake baking uh, <laughs> reveal video. And that's sort of how it caught on. And then I was like, but didn't Seattle, like, mm -hmm. like we, Hamilton and I were very impressed, everybody, that Seattle just decided to not put out a video for a while. I was like, this is amazing. They just put their schedule out. This is the best thing I've ever seen. They're like, no, nah, we're good. This is this is a lot. We're good. But then they got into the mix of the normal <laughs> video I've yet to see. So maybe I'll check that one out during our break here. And hopefully we have CJ Gardner-Johnson and Charlotte Carey joining us. Hamilton, appreciate you as always. You're the best. Talk to you guys in a minute. Welcome back to Up and Adams, our very first guest won a national championship with Alabama. We're going to get into that before being drafted in the top 10. That's right, he was drafted ninth overall by the Denver Broncos. He's not only a pro bowler, he is an all-pro cornerback, and he was named mayor of Shutdown City many a times by our good friend who joins us weekly on the show, Darius Butler. Please welcome Patrick Sertan. Hey, how y'all doing? Can you hear me? <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. Oh, I'm so glad. I think we were struggling to get you on, but technology does its yeah. thing, but we are happy to have you, and especially on a sort of a special day. The schedule's released. I'm so happy to be talking to you, one of the best players in the entire NFL. When you see it pop up the first time, what's the first thing your eyes go to? Um, you know, I just look at the fact that, um, <clears throat> you know, our season coming up, you know, our schedule, um, there it is. I just think that, you know, it's very, you know, throughout, you know, different divisions, um, different conferences. And, you know, you know, it starts off with, you know, pretty good teams, you know, with the Raiders, the Dolphins, um, the Chiefs Thursday night, um, you know, the Bills, um, primetime game as well, too. Um, you know, I'm just looking forward to it, you know, just, um, you know, you could just feel the urgency in the building, you know, getting excited for these games coming up. And it's also, um, you know, it would show us, you know, what type of team we are, you know, early and often. Yeah, and well, you guys have four primetime games. You mentioned the Bills one. I think that's week 10, but we're going to show you your four primetime matchups here. And these are the big boys, right? These are the bright lights. How important to, is it to you to play in primetime games? And which one of these games pops out to you the most? Um, <clears throat> I think it's um, very important, you know, just to play on that national stage, um, on that spotlight you know, on national TV to show uh, what you're capable of, what your team is capable of. You know, it just gives us, you know, uh, a sight, you know, just to go against these great teams, you know, on national TV. Um, you know, obviously the Chiefs is a big one, you know, they're in our division, um, a good team as well, the Bills, the Vikings, you know, all those teams are, um, they were playoff teams last year. Obviously the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. But, um, you know, those teams um, are the ones that, you know, I'm looking forward to. You, you, you're taking on a lot of wide receivers. Listen, there's a, there's a full screen that flies around ever so often of Darrell Rivas. And it's all of the, the wide receivers that he held to 35 yards or under. And it's insane. Here, oh, here it is. You got Randy twice, T.O. twice, Steve Smith, Torrey Hill. I want you to channel this kind of energy when I show you these wide receivers that you're going to be going up against. You've got Stephon Diggs on here, Keenan Allen, Tyreek Hill, Garrett Wilson. Who... Are you eyeing on this list the most? Pick one, Patrick. Um, yeah, it's a schedule. Um, I'm going against a lot of great receivers. Um, you know, probably Diggs or Jefferson, you know, both on primetime football, on national spotlight. Um, I'm looking yeah. forward to those matchups, you know. Um, and, you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a dog fight. It's going to be a battle going against one of the best in the league. Um, you know, both in their respect, respectfully uh, positions. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that. You know, I, I'm always um, ready for a battle. Um, I always get prepared for that. So, you know, I'm ready for those two. It's true, but I, let's talk about that first one on there, Devonta Adams. I know you want that, right? Because you faced him. He's probably, you know, you've shut down a lot of those guys, but he, you know, there, what is it about Adams and how was your mindset going into facing him? Um, yeah, um, you know, he's a, he's a technician at what he does. Um, you know, we battled it out the first year. Um, we mm -hmm. went against each other. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, many more battles. You know, obviously he's in my division, uh, so we played twice a year. Um, 
And, you know, you know, we just battle, compete at a high level. You know, mano ni mano uh, on the field, <laughs> on the bright lights, on the biggest stage. You know, I'm also excited about that matchup as well, too, you know, as we go against each other uh, this year as well. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that matchup. I'm excited. I'd like to see Denver get a win over the Raiders this year. Yeah, and that's that's the most important thing is to get a win um, over a division rival uh, like the Raiders. So, you know, that's the most important thing uh, aside all the matchups and, you know, and all the um, anticipation building on that is to get a win um, in a division. So that's the biggest thing. How much is that crazy man who's now your head coach going to help, <laughs> going to help you do that? Oh, he's going he's gonna to help me a lot. Um, you know, right now I can just tell, like, the focus level um, he has on the team right now. You know, he's very locked in. Uh, he's no, he knows what we're capable of as a team. And, you know, we got um, young talent on the team. Um, you know, I think we're a complete roster on both sides of the ball. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to that. And also, he just knows what it takes, you know, to win on the biggest stages. You know, he's proven that um, in his past before. Uh, his resume speaks for itself. So, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, going on the field uh, with Sean, you know, winning some ball games. So is he, when you say he's really focused, because there's like two sides of Sean. There's like the absolute crazy yeah. person who he, you, you don't have to say it, I'm saying it. He's crazy, ruthless. No, 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 I, trust me, I've, I've seen. Um, <laughs> tell me, <laughs> tell me what you've seen. You know, tell me what you've that, seen. He's shown that. How, what have you seen um, so far? I, I'll tell you this, Sean, um, you know, he's very involved with the team. You know, he he's gonna tell you um, what it is and what it ain't. Um, you know, he's, you know, he's just very, very, you know, in tune with himself. Um, you know, he's got a high uh, personality as well, too. Um, you know, he, he talks, he talks to talk as well, too. So, you know, once you, once you go in and meet him and talk with him, you can understand why, you know, he's one of the best coaches just by his personality. So, you know, he acts just like us as kids, but, yeah. you know, in a good way, in a positive way. So, uh, yeah. you know, he's a great coach in general all around, but, you know, his personality speaks volumes. Because he's crazy and he's ruthless, but then there's also the side you're talking about. I mean, have you seen this side of him yet? The side where he's dancing, the side where he's having fun. Have you seen this side of Sean Payton yet? No, not yet. Um, obviously, <laughs> we got to win. Yeah. Uh, we got to win some ball games first, but, you know, I'm looking forward to that uh, this season because, you know, I can't wait to see that, um, him bring that energy towards the team, that enthusiasm. Um, and, you know, we can't wait to, you know, celebrate victories like that on uh you know, he always got the fresh pair of Jordans on as well, too. So, you know, he always going to stay uh, kicked to his style. So, Patrick, Patrick, what size shoe do you wear? 13. Ooh, is he a 13? I don't remember. But Mark Ingram literally would go up to his office and get boxes of Jordans because yeah. they were the same shoe size. And Jordan just literally sends him all the shoes. So you got, I mean, you might have to squeeze a little bit. You might have to throw, put some, some tissue in the, in the toe or whatever it is. Like, but if you all are the same shoe size, you are set with those Jordans. Oh yeah, um, Sean. Sean be uh, you know telling us the whole backstory on his you know Jordan deal and how he get his players right, um, get his players fitted. So you know once those boxes come to his office, I'm gonna go up. You know, yeah. And ask for a favor. <laughs> you know, but, so. but you gotta win, which I love that you. It was a kind of a trick question. You answered it perfectly. Like you can't celebrate before wins keep happening. Right. You gotta get wins, especially against division rivals, especially in that crazy division that you play in. Now, there was the, that footage of, like, the uh, the Nuggets game, and they won last night or whatever, but it was Sean Payton and it was Russell Wilson and Sean's wife between them, and they're talking. And I was saying that I literally do not think, Patrick, that there is a more, like, odd couple quarterback coach combo than these two. Like, they could not be more different. How, what do you make of them and how they'll vibe this year? Because you spent a year with Russell. Yeah, um, I think they'll get along well. Um, obviously, they're two different personalities. Um, you know, Russ is more, you know, enthused. You know, he's more like, you know, to himself. But also, you know, he's a very strong um, leader at work. And he works hard as well, too. But, you know, I just think they'll gel well um, using a, you know, they both know the game very well. Um, I think that, you know, Sean may offer um, you know, him, um, what he sees on the field, and Russ yeah. may teach him some things on the field as well, too. Yeah. So um, I just think that they'll combine well and jail well 
in a way. I so think they're like I think they're like Tony Stark and Steve Rogers. They're like Iron Man and Captain America. Like these two and Iron right. Man is Sean Payton and then you've got the quiet like church boy, squeaky clean uh Russell Wilson <laughs> as Captain America. Am I wrong? I'm right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um <clears throat> You know, like I said, I just think that, you know, yeah. those two different personalities, once they jail together, I just think that, um, you know, it makes, you know, it makes for one. Um, you know, obviously they've been working already, um, getting prepared <laughs> for the season. I can't wait. I'm excited to see what happens because, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, the offense working and, you know, they work it towards the season. So, um I just, I just believe that, you know, Sean, Sean um, when, when you bring a guy in like that, you know, it brings the best out of everybody. So yeah. I can't wait to see that. You have like a <laughs> smile on your face about it, which I'm really keying into because I think Denver's got a little something for the rest of the league this year. I think it's a bit of a mystery. Russell Wilson was a huge mystery last year. You were doing your thing. If they can click it, make it happen, then it'll make your job maybe a little bit easier taking on all those wide receivers and having to shut them down. So I'm happy for you. I'm excited for what this year brings. Uh, let's wrap this up with a little game that my producers created. It's uh, in your honor. It's called Are You Sir Tan? I'm sure you've heard that before. So it's a little playoff. Are you certain? Are you okay. sure? So I will make a statement and you tell me if you agree or not, if you're Sir Tan about it or not. So last season, you made an oh, an incredible diving, sliding interception to Patrick Mahomes in week 14. You know which one I'm talking about. This year, you'll intercept Patrick Mahomes more than once. Are you certain? I'm certain. Yeah! Certain of it, as I should say. <laughs> ow, ow! We love to hear it. I can't wait. And, and make them that pretty. That was that was beautiful. I almost swore. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, there are some great former Alabama defensive backs in the NFL right now. Marlon Humphrey, Trav Trayvon Diggs. Uh, you are currently the best Alabama DB in the NFL. Are you certain about that? <laughs> I'm certain of it. You can say it. <laughs> You're certain Even though we know this. What? There's so many great, you know, Alabama DBs, you know, across the league. You know, they doing what they're doing respectively on yeah. their side, you know, the ball. So, you know, they just, you know, it just keeps on going, you know, from Alabama. It's like a train, you know, it's like a, you know, cycle, you know, just keep on producing DBs in the league. You yeah. Know, I can't wait to see what we got this year. So. I will say you don't like being compared to other DBs, and I love that about you. Like, you got to give everyone their love, and you say everyone's on their own journey, and I've noticed that about you, and I really respect right. And I do appreciate that about you, Patrick. All right, let me ask you about this show that I've never watched, but I know that you watch FX Snowfall. It just had its series finale. After six years, Snowfall is one of the best series ever. Are you certain about that? I'm certain of it. Um, I just feel like they did my uh, dog Franklin wrong. You know, uh, I just don't, I ain't like the way how they did him at the end. What you happened know, to Franklin? I, I believe, he lived yeah. though. Yeah, he lived, but, you know, it ended up bad, you know, um, everything went wrong, um, and, you know, he didn't get his glory, so uh, we're down the wrong tracks, you know, so, but I love the show in general, I just feel like every season and each episode had me, like, in awe, you know, so it kept me, kept me on the edge of my seat. <laughs> I think, I think Sean Payton's happy, it's over just in time for you to hit the books and watch the Devontae Adams tape and the Devon Diggs tape and get it all going for this year, which is great. Now, we've noticed on Twitter, and this is where, you, listen, I gave you your love, but you lost me here. Now we're not friends, because you like <laughs> videos with snakes in them, okay? This is, are you a snake guy? Are, are we certain about this? Ah! Um, I want to say I'm a snake guy because I'm scared of them as well too. Okay. But I just thought, you know, the video was interesting because, um, you know, I just, I just feel like when you see those type of animals, like just in a bra like that, you know, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> like this, like this video, for example, is like, yeah. I, I would I wouldn't know what to do if I seen a snake like that, like in the open, you know, but it's crazy and it's pretty entertaining to me. But I'm scared of snakes as well too. So Good. you ain't got to um, <laughs> Because I thought you had you had like No, Patrick, you had like multiple snake videos and I'm like, oh my God, is he a snake guy? Because I can't. I literally I want to root for him. I can't, I can't do it. Last but not least, you faced because the schedule was released, you faced uh, some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL this season, but you also faced two of your former 
Alabama teammates, which I love. <laughs> you take on Tua and Mac Jones. You will intercept both of them. Are you certain? I'm certain of it. <laughs> Who are you looking forward to you facing more of those two? Um, I'm looking forward um facing Tua because you know it's you know it's back at home where I'm from, um, playing Miami um, at yeah. the Dolphins Field. Um, I'm looking forward to that game. Uh, it should be fun, you know, just going back home, playing in front of my family, um, in front of my hometown. You know, I mean, I'm very excited for it. We're excited for you. Enjoy the season. The smile is saying it all. You're a man of few words, but the smile is selling whatever you've got going on there in Denver. Good luck to you. Good luck to those nuggets. Good luck to Russell Wilson, Sean Payton, the dancing. Good luck to the snake and the cat, the whole thing. We appreciate you. Patrick Sertan, we're big fans here on Up and Adams. Uh, we're all about the defense today. We have got C.J. Gardner-Johnson on the program. Let's talk about the NFC North champion Lions. All right, week three, New Orleans at Green Bay. So we made for these beautiful Saints fans that will go visit because they travel so well. Uh, you could take the champions to at Lambeau Field. You could have dinner at Crop Supper Club. Okay. Head to a Piggly Wiggly. That's what I would do. Um, you can tour the National Railroad Museum for $12. I wonder how many times 12 has done that. Aaron Rodgers, I would love that. But uh, I want to bring this guy to any social schedule. It is released. This is the life of the locker room. A professional instigator. A true talent in the league. He was a safety for the Saints, we just, just mentioned, the Eagles, and now a team that might win the NFC North for the first time since like the 1800s, CJ Gardner-Johnson, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? It's so good to talk to you. We just had uh, Patrick Sertan on, now I got you, we're talking all defense here, and you have had quite, of the, quite the off season. I think it's very cool that you were at the top yeah. of the list for free agents, you test the market, you do your thing, and you sign with the Lions, a very exciting team. Tell me about your feelings about Detroit? Mm, I'm feeling good, to be honest with you. I'm back with AG, back with Dan. I think the most exciting thing about being here is understanding that these guys got a bigger role. Like, I went from being position coaches to head coach to a coordinator. So I think hearing that voice more, seeing what they can do, you know what I'm saying, being up under their wing and just gathering these young guys so we can try to, you know, win some games together and just continue to get better. Yeah, what are your conversations with Dan like? He seems fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's an insane since I was in New Orleans. He, when he first saw me, he actually hugged me. We talked about like 20 minutes. It was like how I feel mentally checking on me and just acting I'm ready to go, you know, coming off a Super Bowl loss. Mentally, you know, it's a lot. But I'm ready to get back to it and lead these young guys and get us to where we need to be. I love that. You've been hanging out with some of these guys. You're there. You're settled. Uh, who have you bonded with so far? Aiden Hutchinson, Amon Ross St. Brown? I think St. Brown, Amon. Aiden, I think Amon really, because we was on Family Feud together, so I kind of got to see how he really was really react. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tell me about this. What? <laughs> <laughs> so I really can't tell the results. But okay. All I know is me and Amon, we were definitely like, if we had to go again, I, I think we'd be the best duo ever on the show. <laughs> I think we had Steve blow it away. Best dress, everything. <laughs> Wait, but you're saying yeah. if you win again. So the first time did it, did you leave something on the table? Did you have like a chip on your shoulder? Did I you mean... win? <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I don't know. They, they said they let us with the result. They, we will find out the results when the show airs, but yeah. we already know who won. Were game. you nervous? Because mm, I grew up watching with my grandma, so I actually kind of had some answers in my head just in case they hit me with some old school questions. What's the trick to winning, to winning that show? Like, is it just letting it rip? Like, how, like what is the, what is your key, your cheat code? Don't overthink it. Oh, okay. Don't overthink. So <laughs> if they ask you, hmm, what's round and white? Hey, think something simple. Oh, I did not. Don't my, head, my head went, I don't even, my head went to like a loaf of bread. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that's like one of those things where you ask the question, just don't overthink. Dude, this. give me another one. Okay, cool. Okay. Hmm. What's furry and bites? A cat. Is that pretty good? And then you might get a five, you might get a 10 because the answer, it's based on all a million people who answer this yeah. question. So you may, you may never know. So cool. Steve Harvey was cool. Very cool. Fly, too. 
Really? Yeah. I would be, I think I'd be crying laughing with him. Uh, but okay, let's talk, let's talk from cats and to the lions. Let's do it. We'll stay in the cat family. And we'll get to your, <laughs> we'll get to your schedule that was released. Uh, you get to come out the gate hot and go against the Chiefs. Week one, this is, you know, a lot of people saying a lot of love, a lot of respect for you. Is this a personal CJ, GJ revenge game? Truthfully, honestly, no. Stop. I can't, like, I can't. I can't. It, it's funny. It, it'll hurt. It's going to hurt to see them come out Super Bowl champs, and I just faced them. So I think I have to channel my emotions so I can go out and play a good game. I think the guys that's on the team don't understand the magnitude of how I feel because they wasn't there with me, but I'm still going to bring the same intensity, but I think it's – I got chip on my shoulder. I want to beat them. Yeah. I, got one. I kind of want to beat them. I want to spoil the homecomer. Take me through, like, you're so honest, and that's why I love talking to you, and I just love watching you. I look. I think you should be mic'd up every game. If I had to pick <laughs> a player that's mic'd up every game, it is easily you. Take me through yeah. the range of emotions. Like, you lose the Super Bowl. Is it sadness, anger? Then it's thought. Like, where, like take me through the emotions and where you're feeling right now. <sighs> it's, it bothers because it's like, the team I was on, if you look at the structure of that team, you would never get that many vets in the same room. You never get that much talent in the same room in one year. You never find a system that works for everybody. Like, no injuries, no flaws, no team issues. It's like, when you have a Super Bowl run year, when I, going back, I was with Malcolm Jenkins in New Orleans talking to him. Everything has to come together. Everybody had to see the same goal, understand what we're there for. So I think... Losing that game hurt more because if you would have won it, it's like you got to do it again. Yeah. And they expect you to do it again. So I think losing it, it makes you humble up and respect the game more because you play against the best of the best. So seeing Pat playing against them, seeing Chavs, I mean, yeah. you can't be upset because you're playing against the best of the best. You just understand that that's the game that you want to be at and you want to be remembered. So I think my knowledge of that game just tell everybody just be yourself don't change the moment doesn't change just play football for 15 minutes each quarter and let the results take care of itself and i think that stuck with me i really respect how much you've thought about it like you've really put i mean it takes work to and then managing your emotions like you're already thinking about that not even knowing when that game is it's amazing and thanks for sharing that and then i'm looking at the schedule and the only thing you know that's missing is the Eagles on <laughs> your schedule. <laughs> <laughs> no? I mean, ah. I love it. I mean, it's whatever. It's what do whatever. you mean? How, Pete, listen, I will say this. My producer is 10 feet this way. Her name is Marissa. She's the biggest Eagles fan. She is like, why is he not on the team? And it's a huge conversation. Fans are having fans that not want you to go. What happened? I don't think. No, no front office from where I've been at understand the player. They see the hair, lash out, going against players on the on the field. But it's like you rather got as passionate about you or not passionate about you. So I think when you get to a spot, you give it your all, and then they just turn the back on you. I mean, you just treat it like a business. I mean, I'm just here to do what I got to do, make my teammates happy, understand that you can't put your feelings too much into it. So, I mean... I don't, like I got to say, they, they want to take the game away from the player, but you can't really do it because when you put me out there, you can't can't find nothing bad about me. I'm always there for my teammates. I'm the first one on the spot. But those type of conversations with the agents, teams, I just I just let it go in one or the other because the way they see me and the way other people see me, it's two different things. So it's like you can't fight it. I'm here. I'm blessed to be here. I got another opportunity to play football. I mean, Everybody didn't expect me to sit two weeks in the free agency, but, I mean, it's what it is. I mean, it's life. You can't control certain things. You got to understand that God put you in a spot to succeed, mm. and I think I'm here to help these young guys get into a better spot. And then something happens mid-season, and the season happens. But if not, I just, I'm ready to play football for another year and see where I can go. I, I mean, the thing is you can only control what you can control. You're right, but you can control what happens here in this new building with these Lions, mm -hmm. who everybody's talking about. you got a lot of young cats that are, are going to be looking at you and saying, what do we do? How do we play more like you when we're on the field? And so you do have control. And I love I love guys who take that to their next place 
and they ball out. And that's what we, you know, we're fans of you. We are expecting that from you. So we're really excited about that. But you are, like, I don't want you to, like, lose what my favorite, you know, like, you're trash talking. Like, what are we talking about here? We can't lose my favorite thing about you, which is you. the fact that you have that in you. Quickly, I'm going to hit you with one or two topics here, and I want you to give me, you're, you're one of the best Mac talkers in the game. And we've got your new new song, Sky Dweller, playing here. You just dropped it on Spotify. Check it out. I want you to give me the best trash talk about the University of Georgia's football program. The best trash talk about the University of Georgia's football program. Well, I think I only beat them once since I was in school. So I already called them the pups until okay. I actually got them. <laughs> the <laughs> pup from Georgia. <laughs> I think that's the best trash talk I got. Because I think like when you lose it, you can't say nothing. Like, I lost two years out of three against Georgia. So I called them the pups. Okay, quickly, cheesesteaks. You like cheesesteaks? Mm mm. Talk mm -hmm. to me, hurry. I hate them. Cheesesteaks are terrible. I, I can't think of nothing about cheesesteaks right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I don't like it. them. Like, everybody, everybody hyped them up in Philly. Then when I got it, it was like, this is it. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Okay, week, week 13, Michael Thomas. He know what time it is, and I'm not gonna say nothing about that. He know what time it is. Like, I don't hey, know. Man. What time is it? Call Sean. What time is it? Tell me. Listen, you better not come out with that with that crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, keep it on the field. Keep it at that. Keep it at that. <laughs> CJ Gardner Johnson, we appreciate you. Thank you. I got nothing on cheesesteaks. Download his new music, please, over on Spotify. We appreciate you. Listen, I need you back on the show more. I need you back more. Run it back. I'm All free. right, come let's on. run it back. Sounds good. All let's right, week it. week one, Chiefs. You take care of that, and then we'll talk after the game, after you get that W. Up next, Charlotte Carey breaks down the NFL schedule. Joining us now to give all the insights, the ins and outs of the NFL scheduling process, the senior broadcasting manager for the NFL, Charlotte Carey. Good morning. Good morning, Kay. How are you? It's I'm great. Probably not as great as you are because it's done. <laughs> it's out there. You've dealt with the Taylor Swift tours and the derailments and the broadcast partners and everything. What does success look like for you when the schedule is finally released? Nobody too happy, nobody too mad, I imagine. Yeah, uh, honestly, a full night of sleep is, is where it starts. But um, <laughs> uh, uh, no, in all honesty, I mean, I think for us, like it's I'm not sure happy is the right word, but everyone being, um, you know, sufficiently OK with their schedule and not too disappointed is what we're always going for. You can't make everybody happy when you have 32 teams plus the network partners. It's just it's not possible to make sure that everybody is very happy at the end of the day. But, you know, thankfully, one of the things we loved about this schedule is that everyone got a little piece of something. And yeah. when you look at it over the course of the schedule you know there, there there's not too many legitimate gripes to look through from from any team so um over the course of you know this whole process that's one thing that we obviously take into account the whole time especially when we get to the end this schedule kind of checked a lot of those boxes a lot of the things we really liked in here too but also making sure that everybody um we felt was you know sufficiently taken care of i think is the right way to put yeah, it yeah the currency of the nfl as far as respect is where they go, where the nfl schedule is right where do they go where are they going how much are they yeah. traveling so there's a lot of surprises here chicago bottom of the barrel they get five primetime games the chargers get six which is amazing and jordan love gets just as many as aaron Rodgers. what do you know that i don't charlotte Oh, I don't know. I mean, I think Chicago, you start like with a team like Chicago, they were a little bit frisky at the end of the year. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, they're young quarterback, fun to watch. Um, we're, you know, that division, I think, in and of itself is a little bit different this year. It's a little bit wide open. You've got Chicago, Detroit, a new Green Bay, Minnesota, who are all going to hopefully be in this thing. I, I think that that was part of this whole calculus. And you go to Green Bay, your point about, you know, Green Bay and Jordan Love and having a lot yeah. of prime time. There, it's still the Packers. We're really excited to see who Jordan Love is and, you know, how he does with the team. But it's still the Packers. They're such a great national brand. We have to use them somewhere. Um, and, you know, I think we're still confident, again, that division is is somewhat wide open. So um, that's that's how we ended there. Part of it's negotiation, massaging, it's math, it's algorithms, it's, you know, art, feel, all of that. Uh, you know, outside of the Aaron Rodgers thing, outside of Lamar not knowing where they're playing, what was the biggest challenge in this year's unique schedule? Ooh, all right. So this one, it's interesting. We have a whole new construct this year. Our new TV deals kicked in. So yeah. um, one, of the, one of the big things was really just the way that, 
the it, everything is structured this year. The past, everything was a takeaway from CBS and Fox for primetime or filling out other packages. CBS had the AFC road teams. Fox had the NFC road team. So any game you actually were using for anything other than CBS or Fox was considered a takeaway. Yeah. This year, it's all different. Everything was a jump ball. Everything was open. So it was great because we still have minimums to meet on certain networks and otherwise, but we got to look at so many different constructions of this schedule and it was great because it, you know, it gave us more flexibility, but at the same time, it made the search space so much larger. So there was so much to actually look through on a daily basis and get through that we wouldn't have seen in previous years. Uh I want to ask you sort of like what surprised you the most in the process this year. I, clearly, it's unique for all the reasons you're talking about, but also you have yeah. more international games. TNF changes its rules. What, you know, when you put all the stuff into the algorithm machine, which is how I imagine it happening, and you press the button, what came out that you were like, huh, that's interesting? You know, one that's actually pretty interesting, um, I think we can even just go with kickoff, right? Kickoff was one that you look at the Chiefs' home yeah. opponents, and they have, they have so many... I mean, all of their home opponents were actually considered for the kickoff game. They've got great home opponents, right? They have division games. They play the NFC North. They play Miami. And then you get to the the big guns, right? You have your Philly. You have your Cincy. You have your Buffalo. Right. What do you use for kickoff? Kickoff is exciting. It's a great start to the year. We let that float around, and we saw so many different options of what we, you know, were willing to play for kickoff. And honestly, we were willing to play all of them. Um, the We ended up with Detroit, and I think that we all got pretty comfortable with that towards the end, although we did see it float around. Even honestly, towards the last day, we had different options for kickoff. But we got pretty comfortable with Detroit because – the way that Detroit ended the season last year, I think that they were so exciting towards the end of the year. And then also to knock the Packers out of the playoffs in game 272, you know, they they ended the season with such a bang and we're we're excited to see what they can do now against the Chiefs in week one. We are all excited. I mean, I, we nailed it. We killed it. Listen, you go to sleep, Charlotte Carey. You do everything for the NFL. We're happy. We're excited. We're drinking champagne. We are celebrating and toasting to you, Mike North, and everybody uh, who is not too happy, not too sad. We're just ready to play ball. 